Welcome to lecture 52, creating a class. So we already talked about how a class is basically a blueprint. With that blueprint, you can create many objects that stem from it. The, the blueprint itself defines what actions and information all the objects can have. For example, if we were building a student, we can say all the students have a name, an age, and a final grade. So that's the blueprint definition. So now every single time I create an object of that, they'll all have those three pieces of data that I can fill out for the individual object. The blueprint is just the structure of it, and that is the class. So we're going to start off by actually creating our first class of this student. So the way we're going to create our class is we're going to go to the right hand side where it says Solution Explorer. If you don't see Solution Explorer, you can go to View and you can click Solution Explorer there and it should come up. Once it comes up, you see this kind of definition where this is all your solution files. This is your solution and inside your solution will contain all your projects. Right now, we're in whatever project you called it. I called it creating a class. That's the name of the project. So I want to add a class to this project. So I'm going to right click on my project's name. I'm going to go to add. And then you can't see it on my screen right now, but you go to add and then you go to new item. Once you click new item, this dialog box comes up and you can click class. And now I'm going to give the class a name. So I'm going to say this is my student class. So I type in student there, make sure class is selected and I click add. Once I do that, you'll see that it creates a brand new file called class student. And inside my Solution Explorer, I have two files now. I have program.cs, and this stands for program.csharp. And this is where the main method lives. This is where the program starts its execution. But, but then I also add this new class called student.cs. And now this is my custom class that I'm building that, in, that handles all the code with the student class. So let's actually start defining a class. We already know that class is the blueprint. And the, the class is the structure of all the objects that are based from this class. Classes are used to organize information. We can pack all the information together into one entity called student. And everything that involves students can be inside of this class for organization. So we said that our students will have a name, a final grade, and an age. So let's, let's start giving it some attributes. So on a, we need to remember our access modifiers. When we're dealing with classes, we need to always specify our access modifiers. So the two ones that we went over so far are public and private. Public means anyone can access it, and private means only the class itself can access it. I'm going to demonstrate both of them how it works, but those are the two common access modifiers that we're going to be using right now. So for now, I'm going to make these variables or these instant variables or fields. You can also call them fields of this class of student. I'm going to make them public. We will be changing this in the future when we get to get and set methods and properties and constructors. We're going to change this around a little bit because there's a, a concept of data hiding that we need to go over. But for now, we're going to make them public. So let's first give a student a name. So I'm going to say public string name, semicolon. So now this says this defined that all students will have a name built into it. So public string name. It's just a variable. It's called an instance variable, which we'll get into. And it's also called a field. It's a field of students. All students have a name is what it's saying. The next thing it has is an age. So I'm going to give it an age. I'm going to say public int age. So all students have ages now. And the last thing I want to do right now is I want to give it a final grade. So I'm going to say public double final grade, semicolon. So it has three pieces of data that all students will have. So, so far so good. We created our blueprint. Now we want to start using our blueprint and we want to create some objects or some instances of this class. So we're going to head back to our program.cs where our main method lives and we're going to start creating some instances. 
Now, this is where that new keyword comes into play. Whenever we deal with reference types, and like I said before, classes by default are reference types. Anytime we deal with reference types, we have to say new because that new keyword is creating a separate set of memory for this class. And then that variable holds the reference to that memory location rather than with value types the value is only stored into the variable. So the, the variable isn't holding the memory location, rather it's holding the actual value of whatever is stored into it, like 56, 72, whatever the number is. Whereas a reference type holds a reference to the memory location because it's bigger. And a good way to point this out is, if I create a student, every student has a name, age, and final grade. So there's right now three pieces of information for every student. So that's why I have to, I can't just store a value like five equals student because there's three separate pieces of information. I need three different pieces. So that's why I create this separate memory block that has all the information that's needed to handle all of this. And that's what the new keyword that we've already seen the new keyword here and there, but we're, we're going to look at it a little bit more. So this is how we create an instance of a class. So our class name is student. So I'm going to create my first student. I'm going to say, student s1 now this is the same thing as going int x semicolon the data type is student in this case the data type in this case is int so our new state our new custom data type that we created ourselves is called student so i'm saying student that's the data type and then the variable's name the variable's name in this case is s1 for student one so it's the same thing i just declared a variable but now when I actually assign it a value, I'd use the new keyword. So I'm going to say student S1 equals new student, open parentheses, close parentheses, semicolon. We will go over what this is in the next lecture. The next lecture is on constructors, and that's what's happening here. It's calling a constructor, and we will talk about that all in the next lecture. But for now, this is how we create a student's objects. So this object is just one version of the student blueprint, but I can take that blueprint and create many students. So let's, let's go ahead and give this student some information about itself. I'm going to say S1 dot. So look, it has an age, a final grade, and a name. I can give this student all this information it needs. So I'm going to say, okay, the student's name, this specific S1's name is Bob. S1's age let's say he's 15 and his final grade let's say he got uh, 65 so we created this student called s1 this, this is a specific object of student and then we gave it some information about it that makes it unique but because student is a blueprint we can go ahead and create another student so I'll go do that I'm gonna say student s2 equals new student and then I'm going to go, oops, S2. I'm going to go S2.name equals Frank. S2.age equals 12. S2.final grade equals 90. So the thing, that, the note here is that, remember I said the class, the blueprint itself defines the structure of the class. The structure is the name, age, and final grade. Every student has a name, age, and final grade but there are different versions so this is student one and this is student two they have different names and ages and grades but they have the same structure of being a student that is why a lot of people when they teach classes they use that blueprint kind of um, um, example because that's how it works in the real world let's go ahead and create one more student so let's say student s3 equals new student so i define this new student and I do s3.name equals Ted, s3.age equals 15, s3.final grade equals 95. So now we have three students. And for right now, this is the same thing we've been working with all along. Our students have information, but that's the same thing as variables when we did int x equals 5 or int number equals something or string names or 
int array grades whatever the case is they're just variables but in this case our variables are inside of this package called a student to make it more organized so that we can write more efficient code but once I have this I can treat it all the same way if I wanted to print out students one's name I can say console.write line s1.name and we should see Bob and as you can see it prints Bob now this will change a little bit this kind of syntax where we actually define all the variables inside this class like this will change when we look at constructors because there's a whole concept of constructors that we need to go over but for the most part we're starting to build classes the next thing I want to go over with classes is building the action part of a class so right now our classes just have information they're just storing information a name age and final grade but our students should also have some kind of actions so an action like I said that we went over in the last section is a method a method is an action so if I want to uh, say our students can have some actions for example one action our student can have is hello say hello so I'm gonna say public because I want everyone to be able to use it and we'll look at that in here in a second as well when we make it private but I'm gonna say public void and I'm gonna, I'm gonna call the method say hello and that's it for now we'll define the body here in a second notice how I did not make this static now that we're dealing with classes, we're not going to make them static until I go over what static is. That will probably be the last lecture in this section, and I will go over what static is. And then at that point, you'll understand why we were using static in main, but now we are not using static anymore. But so while we're inside of a class, you do not have to make it static anymore. So we have public void, say hello, it has no parameters, and all I want it to do is print to the console. I want it to say its name. So it's going to say, I'm just going to say hello from, I'm going to plug in my name. So I'm going to plug in name. So it says hello from name. So every student can now say hello. So that's the point of functions. We built a function inside of our class, and now all of our students can use that function. So S, let's start with S1. So I set S1's name, age, and final grade. But now I'm going to make him say hello. So I'm going to say s1 dot say hello. You can see it appears down here. I click say hello. It takes in no parameters, so I don't put anything in there, just a semicolon. And now s1 will say hello. Now, as you can see, it says hello from Bob. Even though all the students have a say hello function, it's only using the name of the individual student. This is just the blueprint, but it knows how to plug in what actual student they're talking about and because there's a thing called the this reference which we'll talk about in the constructor uh, lecture but it knows when you go s1 dot say hello to use the bob information because you said s1 dot say hello if i do say s2 say hello it will now say hello from bob and hello from frank so the whole point of this function stuff is that the code for saying hello is completely hidden from us right now right now we are the user of this class and we just know okay students can say hello but we don't have to worry about the implementation we don't have to worry and say what does this actually do all I need to know is okay it prints to the console whatever it is kind of message but I don't need to, I don't need to know how it works behind the scene that's the job of whoever's building the class which ironically we are too but I'm saying as the user right now they don't care about what the implementation of the function is as they only care that it works so when we were using the random class before we had random r equals new random and we did r dot next this next function generated a random number so all we cared about was calling r dot next but we did not care about how the code was actually written but in that function to actually generate the random number we didn't care about that it's all hidden behind the scenes so that that falls under this idea of hiding all the information uh, and making this package this package of a class that you can ship out to people that they can use in order to make programs basically so let's make s3 also say hello by saying s3 say hello run the program and now all three of my objects all three of these instances of students said their hello message 
that and they plugged in their appropriate messages with Bob, Frank, and Ted. They plugged in their names. So, just a little terminology here. When I say student S1 equals new student, when you call new, that's called instantiation. Instantiation. It, it, it's called instantiation because, like I said, it's involved, you're, you're allocating memory that differently than how we've been doing it before. So when we say new, we're allocating memory in a separate memory location. There's a stack and a heap, and now we're allocating memory in a different location. I'm not going to really go into it too much in this course because this is just a fundamentals course. Maybe in the future when I make my advanced course, we can talk about that more. So before this lecture is over, I want to quickly look at that private feature again, that access modifier. Right now, everything in the class is public, and that's what public means. That means that anyone can use it if it's public. But as soon as you make something private, that means that the, only the class itself can use it. So, for example, if I make name private right now and say private string name, now only the class can use it. And as you can see, the say hello function is a part of the class, and it can use name. It has no problem. It's not giving me an error. It's using name for this function right here. However, when I go back to program, notice how I'm getting these errors. This is I'm getting these errors because name is private, and I'm trying to access name from outside of the class. I'm not in the class definition anymore. Now I'm using the class, but I said that name is private. So when I try to go s1 dot, you can see name doesn't appear anymore. It's private. It's hidden from the users. And we're going to look at why we want to do this kind of thing in a lot of detail. We'll, we'll look at it in multiple lectures of why we want to hide data behind the scenes. There's a really important reason why we do that. Um, but I really want to, what I want to show you here is that when I make something private, things that are not inside of the class can't use it. However, when I'm inside of the class, I can still use name. Name is perfectly fine. It's not giving me an error. I can plug in name here, no problem. However, when I'm outside of the class, I cannot use name because it's private. If I move this over here, let me try to pull, pull that out and pull this out so you can see them both. What I want you to see is when I actually make it public again, you can see how the errors will go away. Watch. So I'm going to make this public, hit enter, and now the errors went away because now it can access it again. If I go S1 dot, you can see the name appears again. However, as soon as I make this private, they, they get error because it's hidden. The users can't use this anymore. It's hidden. It's only data for the class itself to use. And now you're probably wondering, well, what is the point of that? What's the point of having data that the class can only use itself? And we will get into that. That's the whole point of th these get and set functions and properties and constructors.